Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching the Now Let's Review channel. We're going to be reviewing the 10 Ways CGO 800S next on Now Let's Review. All right, so to start off with, I just have to say, this might be one of my favorite e-bikes that we've tested. Me too. Um, it really shows what you can do when you pair back on some of the things that you think you'd need in an e-bike, like a big battery. This doesn't have a huge battery and a big motor. This one doesn't have a huge motor, but everything else about this bike is really, really nice and well done. Yeah, the design is so perfect that they integrated the battery into the frame so well that honestly, I think most people looking at this bike wouldn't really think it was an e-bike, which leads me to what I think is my number one use for this bike, bike paths. When I ride an e-bike on bike paths, I get a lot of dirty looks. How about you? Yeah, because I'm usually riding something that resembles more of a motorcycle than an e-bike or a, a regular cycler's bike. And this has just such a nice, friendly look to it. And again, you can barely tell that that contains a battery and the rear doesn't have a big or loud motor. That's a really key point. It's a very quiet bike. Um, you're seeing some footage here and we'll just cut to audio of that. Yeah. Yeah, really silent. And I think a lot of that is accomplished by, yes, it's a small motor. So I want to point out the motor here is a 250 watt. 10 Ways has told us that the new version of this model will have a 350 watt. So the one you'll probably get will have a bigger motor. I don't think it'll be that much bigger in size. Mm -hmm. But what makes it super quiet in addition to that, I think, is this belt drive. Yeah, no chain. It uses a belt drive, which means that, look, I'm touching this right here. Could I, you, just imagine, just imagine really getting your hands on a chain Look at that. Nice and clean, yeah. nice and quiet. It's so quiet, so clean. Now, of course, it's only one gear. Right, it's only a single speed. But I wanna talk about my other favorite part of this bike, and that is torque sensing. Yeah, it uses a MyVice C201 torque sensor, and it's a magnetic torque sensor. And so this is different. You might be like, what are you guys talking about? Usually on e-bikes, you get a cadence sensor. That means it starts to feel what you're doing, and then it kicks in, and that can take up to half a second or a second. And you might be like, that sounds great. This is almost instantaneous, which means that it makes you feel like you are the one doing all the power. And so you just get used to this nice, smooth feeling when you're riding. I think we've only tested about one other bike that has had that, and that bike cost four or five thousand dollars. Yeah, let's talk about the price. Uh, this I just saw on a Valentine's special for $17.99 uh, here in the US, and I was really surprised. And it's one of the reasons why I thought when we got it that it would be kind of crappy, but I want to go through the features and the quality aspect because I really was surprised what they pulled off at this price point. Yeah. So let's start with suspension. So you get an SR Suntour front fork. Um, and it does, it's really nice. Uh, we've tested lots and lots of different e-bikes with lots and lots of different types of front suspension. And you either get two different types. There's either the type where it doesn't feel like it's front <laughs> suspension at all, or it feels like you're suddenly on a boat and you, whoa, holy captain, we're going faster. Like it feels wonky wonky. This soaks up the bumps without feeling like you're suddenly taking off <laughs> when you accelerate. Second thing I really love, I know it's gonna seem like a little thing, it are the fenders. These are aluminum extruded fenders. So they're not those plastic ones that are gonna get dented or broken. They're aluminum. They look great in matte black. They're very narrow. And they're very sturdy. Yeah. They have actual stiffening pieces that run uh, underneath them that you don't see, but it means that they are very, very sturdy. They're not gonna bend or flex or get kind of pushed into things. And if you're kind of new to biking, you're not gonna think about fenders. You're gonna think like, why do I need them? Well, because any kind of moisture on the ground is gonna end up on the, your back. Right, and you might be thinking, well, I, if it's raining, I'm not gonna go biking, of course. Um, but when the sun comes up and it's a beautiful day right after the rainstorm and you wanna go for a bike ride, yeah, you're gonna have a stripe right up your back of dirt and mud and water right. uh, without having fenders. So fenders are sh uh, just a must, I would say, if this is more than a toy. And that's where I think that this really 
shines, it's not a toy. No, let's talk about the brakes. Uh, on a bike of this price point, usually you get regular cable brakes. Here, you get Tektro hydraulic brakes. Um, they feel wonderful, they have great stopping power, and I just fell in love with them. Yeah, that you don't have that kind of grinding feeling. It feels very soft to pull them, and it gives you a lot more stopping power than your typical cable brake, and, and you're gonna be less likely to uh, lock up one of the wheels and go for a skid. So it has 28 inch aluminum rims, and these are CST classic Zeppelin tires, and they have a nice tread on them. It's, um, you know, there's, there's those tires that have like no tread on them, and I'm not a huge fan of those. Uh, then, of course, there's like fat tires and stuff like that. This is nowhere near a fat tire, mm -hmm. but it was a really nice urban tire. I felt like it was great for city driving. Yeah, it's nice that they're not too thin and they're not too big. Uh, too big means that it's gonna be loud. Um, it also, like you're saying with the tread, if the tread is too aggressive, you're gonna sound like a motorcycle motor <laughs> while you're driving along, even though there is no motor on the thing. So it's a really nice uh, kind of urban blend where it can take a little bit of moisture, um, but you're mainly gonna wanna be sticking to roads. You're not, this is not an off-road kind of bike, no. um, but I think that for, you know, patches of, you know, dirt in a city that you might find, I think it, that this will be okay. This is my favorite style of frame, a pass-through frame. It allows me to get on and off the bike really comfortably or just stopping, I get to get down from the bike without, <laughs> without, without a bar where you right. don't really want a bar. Want and a bar the here. way they did that is with the 6160 aerospace aluminum frame. It's really strong. And so normally where you'd need support, you don't. Yeah, and that allows for you to have the battery release right here. Easy access to the battery. Really nice, easy access to the battery. Some some other bikes, when they need to put the cross point across, they'll they'll put the battery in, but they'll have it come out the bottom. Right. So you have to like turn the wheel and, and you'll have to try and catch the battery as it falls out. Uh, this is a very nice style, nice and comfortable. You unlock it and then you can pull it out nice and easy. Nice thing here is a lot of the early e-bikes, you had to have the key in while you rode. And I don't like that. It's just one more thing to, to whack or bend. Here, you can keep the key at home if you want to. Um, that means you can't take the battery out without the key, but when you're out for a ride, you're probably not gonna wanna take the battery out anyway. And now you might be saying, uh-oh, uh, if, if I can ride this bike without the key, people are gonna be able to steal it. Yeah, so there's a nice feature right up here, and let's talk about this. This is one of my most favorite features on the bike, an integrated screen. You pr that's another reason why you can't even tell this is an e-bike. Yeah. There's no screen sticking out here. This is the screen. And a lot of other e-bikes, basically it's a bike, with e-bike components strapped onto it. Here, yes, it is an integrated screen right into the handlebars. And there's a lot of really good integration between that and the app. Yeah. So first of all, when we're talking security, um, you can set a password for this bike um, and you can enter it right through the handlebar controls. So you don't need a phone to unlock it or anything like that. As long as you remember the password, you're gonna be all set and good to go. You can also shut that off if you live in a place where you don't think that your bike is gonna be stolen or if you have some amazing bike lock. Um, but it is a really nice feature that you can set a lock remove it, um, and the menu is actually pretty good. They gave you, I would say, enough buttons and the way that it works makes enough sense. You know that there's a lot of digital products where they give you like the digital watch controls where it's like, hold two buttons for three seconds, but if you want the other menu, you have to hold one button for five seconds. Like, that's confusing. Yeah, it's a this, nice color screen. This works really well. The screen is very bright and you can adjust the brightnesses. So if it's too bright at night, you can turn it down lower pretty quickly, I might add. Now you just went for a bike ride and it did something I didn't think it could do. You put in your destination into the 10 Ways app and then it gave you what? gave me turn by turn navigation on the screen. Wow. Now, it tells me, you know, turn left or turn right or make a U-turn. Um, and then it tells me the number of meters uh, until I have to do that. It's not perfect um, because basically your phone is doing all of the heavy lifting in terms of the GPS, and then it has to send it through Bluetooth to the screen. So there is a bit of a delay, but um, if you were going on, say a longer trip, on a place where you weren't that familiar and you didn't want to stop every block and be like, now do I turn left here? This is a really nice option. Yeah, because normally I strap my phone onto a bike right here and it just means one more thing I have to worry about and have to power. Here, I don't have to have the screen on, it's just in my pocket. And a lot of times when, and from experience, when you're going for an e-bike ride and you do have your phone mounted to the screen, you are still going to have to stop and zoom in and zoom out. And that takes you away from your ride. If you know that you're gonna take a left turn, well then that's nice. I will say, however, that 
um, the app is a little rudimentary. I couldn't, you know, set waypoints along my trip to, you know, take me past the lake or put me on the bike path. And when I started to not take the correct turns, um, it would update and try and correct me, but it didn't just say, you're on a bike. Why don't you stop and turn around? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that makes sense because in some situations you're going to be on like a one-way bike path or a one-way road and turning around isn't going to be an option for you. So I think that it is probably the best balance for the level of sophistication that it has. Another nice feature, I know this is a kind of nitpicky, but we review a lot of bikes. Uh, the seat adjustment is right here. Mm -hmm. Real easy to do. Okay. A lot of bikes, you have to do it with tools, which means you have to bring the tools, or if something gets loose during your trip, you're like, oh no, my seat's loose now. Here, it's just an easy adjustment. Yep. And you have the little knob, so if you need it tightened or something. It's just a it. nice, thoughtful piece to it. Yeah. I do want to point out here that the tires are using a Presta valve. Um, it does come with a pump, um, so because a lot of people don't have Presta valve pumps if you're not really into bike riding. Mm -hmm. um, but so I just want to kind of point that out. And it takes a lot of pressure to, to pump up these tires. Yeah, 40 to 65 PSI. Um, that's pretty high compared to most tires that you're used to. Um, you know, when you were a kid, it was probably 20 to 30. Um, we're well past that range. Right. Um, so having a nice pump is probably going to be something that you want, although as long as the tires stay uh, inflated, it shouldn't be something you have to worry about too often. Yeah, don't forget to check out our pump episode right here where you can find a bunch of different cool pumps to bring along for your trip. Another nice feature, uh, this bike rack on the back. Comes with the bike. Yeah, it holds up to 20 kilograms and uh, it's just wonderful. I think all bikes, you should consider having one because you never know when you're going to want to throw something on the back. And just really well integrated. Like, look, they put the connectors on the bottom of the rear frame, which means that you don't have some nasty looking welds on the outside. Mm. And let's talk about welds. I know. Where are they? I know. I don't even see a weld it's practically. Beautiful. There's There's one here I do see, but like those are the only ones and they're so well painted. There's, there's two in here, but they've been clearly either sanded or, or yeah. well painted over the frame. It's just something you'd see on like a $4,000 bike. E easily. Let's talk about lights. You got a great little headlight there in the front and you have turn signals and a flashing brake light in the back, which is just a nice feature again for this price point. Blinkers on an e-bike. That is super, super, super nice. Yeah. And speaking of lights and riding a bike, you should always be wearing a helmet. And we are big fans of the Lumos helmets. Yeah, having a light on your head and on the back of your head is a really, uh, really smart thing to do because that's obviously going to be up high, uh, easy for people to see. So even if your bike does have really good lights like this one, having um, a light up here <laughs> is the best place because that's where cars are going to see them. So yeah, go check out the link below for Lumos helmets because you look, the one time that you need a helmet, you want to make sure that you're wearing a good one. So there's two versions of this bike. You can get the US version where the top speed is 20 miles an hour. Yep. And I tested that today. Okay. And how'd that feel, by the way? It felt um, pretty good. So kind of in the con category is that you have the belt drive, which is nice and quiet and I can touch the belt and not get my hands dirty, but uh, it means that you can't change gears. So if you're going up a hill or if you start to get going really fast, that just means that you either have to put in more power into your legs or the motor has to put in more power or your legs have to start going a lot faster. I think that it was really well balanced, this gear ratio between um, power and speed. So I was able to get the bike started from a standstill all on my own um, with the gearing that it has. And I was able to get up to 20 miles an hour with the same gearing ratio. Now I was flying a bit fast. It felt a little fast for my feet, um, but you can actually set the top speed in the menu of the bike. So if 20 miles an hour is too much, most bike paths, 15 is kind of the, hey, you're going a little fast there, buddy. I think that uh, it's nice to have 20 on certain roads, but you don't necessarily need to. And the great part about the torque sensing is that it's not going to fly you up to that speed. Right. In Europe, this bike is limited to 16 miles an hour top speed. And that's because of European regulations. Right. Uh, I have no idea if you can hotwire it, but that's, hey, <laughs> but hey, I don't want to get in trouble with the Carbonieri or anything. So uh, we'll leave it at that. So it's a 374 watt hour battery. Like you said, it's not a huge battery, but they do claim that you can get 62 miles or 100 kilometers of range. Next up, let's talk about the weight. It's actually a really well weighted bike. Uh, this weighs 41.9 pounds without all the extra stuff, but let's talk about the real weight. It's 50.7 pounds with the rear rack, the pedals and the fenders and the fenders and that's pretty much the way you're i think you're going to outfit right. it so you're not going to be picking this up with your pinky anytime anytime soon but um it is liftable i would say it's heavy 
but um, all e-bikes are heavy. Let's just put it out there. Yeah, and I mean, the bigger e-bikes are more in the 60 or 70 pound range. So this is easily put onto a bike rack um, if you're fairly fit. If not, you're probably gonna want two people. And because of this kind of frame, you might wanna get one of those spreader bars that goes from here to here so you can put it on most standard bike racks if it's not the kind that get picked up from the wheels. And if you wanna see more about bike racks that this will work on, check out our review here of some Yakima bike racks. So you just took it for a test ride on some hills. What did you find out? It, it says in the um, literature that it can go on a 15 degree slope with a 150 pound person. You just tested it on a hill that was about that. What did it feel like? It, um, it definitely shows it's 250 watts there. Um, most of the time, it feels like an infinitely powerful bike that you can just get up to top speed nice and quickly. But on the hill, I really felt like it was struggling. I was struggling. But uh, they have updated this to 350 watts. Now I know you can't conjecture what that would be, but I'm assuming it would have been an easier climb. It would have been somewhat better. Uh, yeah, I can't speak to what it would be, but it would be slightly better. I would say that 500 watts is the category where you start to not even feel hills. Um, but 250 watts, it, this feels a lot better than like a lot of the e-scooters that we've tried and even some of the other e-bikes that we've tried because it's using torque sensing. The biggest problem with cadence sensing systems is that you are almost never putting in anything. You're just pretending to bike and you can even hear the like clicking where you're not even engaging uh, the gear system um, and you're not helping the bike up. So by you actually putting in the work and it helping you do that, it does make it a lot easier going uphill, even with the 250 watt motor. It comes in three colors, all of them are matte. You can get it in the matte black, the matte sky blue, and the matte pebble gray. And I have to be honest, the paint job looks stellar. It really does. It really, nice matte finish. They chose nice colors. A lot of e-bike companies are like, let's do an orange, let's do a yellow, let's do a green. We'll and do a like, lime green. Right. Um, I, I, it's nice and subdued. Very it subtle looks, colors, yeah. Looks like it costs a lot more than it does. Yeah. So let's get into the pros and the cons. Uh, this one is just gonna have a whole big list of pros because uh, I really did fall in love with it like you did. And I think a big reason why it has so many pros is because it really knows what category it's in. Yeah. This is not a one size fits all, does everything kind of e-bike. It really is focused on urban commuting and bike paths, stuff that normal people are going to do. This is not, you know, to do BMX jumps or anything like that. I really like that they chose what they wanted to do and they excelled at all of those points. Like I wanna say, we have a specialized e-bike from a few years ago and it feels like 10 ways really studied specialized in other high-end brands and came up with pretty much all the features and then found a way, I don't know how, to do it cheaper. Yeah, I'm very impressed. Another pro for me would be, um, it's very similar to yours, componentry. Every component on this bike feels really nice. Even the headlight feels really nice, the pedals, all of the stuff on it. A lot of e-bikes we get and it's like, we put a big battery on there and a big motor. You can go fast, but everything else on it is a piece of crap. Yeah. This is, everything's nice on it. I love it. Also just the front here, uh, a lot of e-bikes, you get way more wiring and cabling mm -hmm. that goes on and here they really minimized it and kept it to look again, like a regular bike. Packing, I know this doesn't seem like a big deal, but we see a lot of bikes, we have to unpack them all. And if they don't pack a bike well, then the chances of you getting it in good condition are gonna be lowered. And then you're gonna have an unpleasant experience where you have to get some piece sent to you. Here, it was super well packed. And it came with a good, well-written instruction manual with good pictures and everything. They gave you instructions on how to set up the brakes so that way they don't rub. Um, it's the first time I had ever seen that. It, I am actually learning from the instruction manual that they gave us. Yeah, that's almost never happens. Also as nice is the rear fender came already attached to the rear wheel, which can be tricky. Obviously you have to put on the front one yourself, but that's not that hard. Yeah, um, we, yeah we had to put it on the front light and the front fender, but yeah, not that difficult and uh, just really overall really impressed with it. Yeah, I mean, we were up and running in about 15 minutes. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. The integrated screen, I just, I love that feature and I love that there's a really good app that integrates with it. So you can see uh, your route, you can see all sorts of things about how many cycles that the battery has gone through. Yep. Uh, I love that being put onto the app and I love that the screen isn't just one of those monochrome crappy screens. It's really beautiful and it's so into the bike that you, you forget you have a screen. I think we could go on all day about the pros. Are there any cons? There are a few cons for me. Um, and <laughs> are they cons or are they just engineering trade-offs that they decided to make? Um, so the first would be uh, there's only one gear. Um, I know that a lot of people who grew up 
biking, you went from your one geared, you know, bike that probably came with the training wheels on it, and then you finally got your real bike, and you were going click 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 do 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 do, and you're you know gearing your bike, and that was so much fun. Now coming back to a single speed. Oh, I just, I kind of miss the gearing. I'm going to push back, um, not needing all that extra stuff and all of that stuff that needs adjustment from yeah. time to time. And then the whole reason for the gears was because you didn't have a motor, so you needed the gears. Here, I mean, I just think it's a trade-off that they smartly made. You don't need it. I think so too. Um, and then the next one is that there's no throttle on this bike. If you want to be moving, you have to pedal it. Um, there is no uh, thumb throttle. There's no twist throttle. There's I will say that is nice in an intersection or somewhere where you want to get through quickly. I love having a throttle, but this does respond so quickly that I kind of forgot that I needed it. Yeah, with the torque sensing, as long as you've pulled up to that intersection and you say, one, two, three, four, five, I'm in, you know, top boost mode, um, then you can get across pretty easily. It's going to give you about the same amount of power as if you had a throttle. So again, I think it was just a good engineering trade-off. It's just a question of like preference. And lastly, I want to wrap up and just talk about who this bike is for. Uh, we're different ages, and I think that's a strength of when we do reviews so that you can kind of decide like, who do you want to listen to? This is I think going to become one of my favorite bikes because I am more of an urban commuter style person. I like bike paths and I like riding at kind of 15 mile an hour speeds. I'm not like super performance guy. So for me, I think this has pretty much everything I want. How about it, you? Yeah, it really uh, speaks to an aspect that we haven't covered much, which is rider position. Um, this is a much more upright position for a bike. And that's because you don't have to put in so much effort. So you don't have to be in this you know, Tour de France kind of stance, uh, you can be much more upright, much more Dutch mm -hmm. um, right. <laughs> sort of style. And I think that a lot of people are going to fall in love with that because you don't have to put in quite as much effort because the motor's going to be doing that work for you. Um, as a younger rider, as someone who might be more extreme, um, I still like the bike because it feels really, really high quality. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, I, I love a lot of the e-bikes that we have that are really powerful, um, but you do kind of feel a little rinky-dink sometimes going down a bike path, passing people who are on their, you know, $8,000, 16 gram, you know, cycling bikes. Here, I think you're going to fit in a whole lot better on the bike trail. Please let us know in the comments below what your questions are. We will be monitoring those to help you to answer questions that you have. And let us know what other things you'd like us to review. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button and also the notification bell button so that you'll be notified of our next video because we review lots of things, not just e-mobility, but EV chargers, batteries, solar stuff. Stuff. So let us know in the comments what you want us to be reviewing so we can do that for you. We'll see you next time on Now, now Let's Review. review.